We bless you. 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 Glory to your high name, Jesus. Oh, Rabba Shata Yarada Boshaya. Oh, Rabbo Shila Malala Masataya. Oh, Rabba Shala Malala Boreliasa. Era Lama Sila Lama Hataya. Oh, Rabba Shila Malala Baladiasa. Era Marian Sana la mala de derecha. Era la mala la mala de Ashaya. Corre pa casi la la mala la mala de Ashaya. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Come on and bless him. Corre pa la la bocha da baja. Era basi la la mala la bocha da baja. Corre pa si cala la la mala de Ashaya. We bless your name, Jesus. 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 We magnify your God. We glorify your God. We glorify your God. We came to glorify. We came to magnify. We came to glorify. Gore koso kalamaha, ela basila boshaya. Gora basila la maradeyasa, kela balada boko shala la maradeyasa ya. Yela la mana la la maha ya, anda la la boshila la mana la maha. Ela manda la la bola la maradeyasa, esa la la balada boko se, esa la la bora me asia. Ela manda la la beke she, eso la balada maha. Es la mala la mala la mala, es la la mala la mala, es la mala la mala niasa, es la mala basha, es el 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 que se, es la mala la mala la casa tabaja, es la mala la mala la mala la mala de de ese, es la la mala la mala la mala, es la mala basia. I bless your name, Jesus. 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 I praise your God. I praise you for your goodness. I praise you for your mercy. I praise you for your loving kindness. God, in season and in out of season. God, I still bless your name. God, I praise your name. God, I magnify your name. Because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. You provide all that I need, God. And so I bless your name. God, I praise you. Because I have no need. All of my needs are met in you. God, I praise you. Because you're Alpha and Omega. You're always in the beginning. You're always in my ending. Father, I know you're already working it out for my good. Father, I praise you. I may not see it all. But I bless you because I trust you. Trust you for being who you are. God, I bless your name. I bless your name. Because your eyes are my promise. I bless your name. Because you see and you know. I bless your name, Jesus. I praise you in faith. I bless you by faith. I bless you because I trust you. I bless you because I know your record. I know you never lost a case. I know you got to be the ultimate provider. Somebody Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him for making the way. Somebody bless him for making the way. He's already making the way. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Because you're providing for our families. 
we praise you, God. Uh, wherever the need is across the country, uh, God, you're making a way out of nowhere. Uh, Father, we shut it down today. Uh, Father, every house, God, uh, that is in foreclosure, uh, we shut down the hand of the enemy. Uh, God, we speak it in Jesus' name. Uh, God, we speak grace. Uh, God, we speak longevity. Uh, God, we speak that you open up a door. Uh, and God, where there is no money, uh, let there be your favor. Uh, and so we praise you. Uh, we stop the repossession uh, of anything that we possess. Uh, God, we bless your name. Uh, God, we praise your name. Uh, God, we pray right now uh, that you keep the lights on. Uh, God, you're the provider. Uh, God, you said that your eyes, uh, your eyes are upon the saints. Uh, God, you said in your word. Uh, that I never seen the righteous forsaken. Uh, no, it's seen big bread. Uh, and so, God, instead of us begging today, uh, we praise you, God. Uh, we praise you for the end result. Uh, we praise you, God, uh, because you have the final answer. Uh, we praise you, God, uh, because the way is already made. Uh, we bless your name, God, uh, because you're supernaturally uh, intervening right now. Uh, we praise you, God, uh, because you're supernaturally uh, speaking to somebody. Uh, on our behalf, God, uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, somebody bless his name. Oh, Rabbi Shaya. Oh, Rabbi Sekebeha. So, Rabbi Shanda Maha. Shanda Rabbi Shaya. Oh, Rabbi Shaya. Let it rain, God. Let it rain down finances. Let it rain, God. Let it rain down supernatural money. God, let it rain. God, we said that we would decree a thing and it shall come to pass. God, you said in your word that if we pay our vows and that we call on you in the time of trouble, that you will hear us and deliver us. So, God, I speak it. I speak and pull down supernatural natural money. I speak and pour down money that we didn't work for. God, I speak it. I call it down now. Somebody begin to call it. I hear the Holy Ghost say it. We can call it in today. Call in supernatural finances. Call it in. Call in thousands. Call in millions. This is the prayers of the saints and he shall answer us. Somebody call it down. Call it down. Come on, call it in. Call it in. God, we speak to the atmosphere. We speak to the north, south, and the east, and the west. We command you to let it go. We command you to let it go. We command you to let it go. In the name of Jesus, we speak to the elements. We command you to untie it. In the name of Jesus, we speak a release. In the name of Jesus, we speak more than enough. In the name of Jesus, we speak more than enough. I just wish somebody that believe it. I just need somebody to believe it. Because it is happening. It is happening. It is taking place. It is occurring now. You shall have whatsoever you say. Speak it now. Speak it by the authority of Jesus Christ. Speak it. Speak it in Jesus' name. 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 Speak it in Jesus name. Speak it now. Speak it now. You looking at me. Speak it now. Speak it now. It wouldn't be happening if the Holy Ghost hadn't given it to me. You know me by now. You never heard me do this. Speak it now. We can break it. We can break poverty. We can speak supernatural money. We can speak supernatural miracles. Pull it down now. Oh, 
Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 We believe it today. We receive it today. We receive it today. We receive it today. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. We receive it today. We receive it today. You don't believe that it's happening. But I prophesy that it is. We receive it today. Hey, 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 hey,
Mario Satan in the Asa, Asa and the Mother of the Asik and the Mother of the Asa, Asa and the Asik and the Mother of the Asande, Asa and the Mosset and the Mother of the Asa, Asa and the Asa, Asa and the Asa, Asa and the Asa, take your hands off, Asa and the Mother of the Asa, Asa and the Asa, Asa and the Asa, Asa and the Mother of the Asa, Asa and the Asa, Asa and the Asa, Asa and the Mother of the Asa, Asa and the Mother of the Asa, Asa and the Asa, Asa and the Asa, now in the name of Jesus, Asa and the Mother of the Asa, I release it in the name of Jesus. Yes, see Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Glory to your high name, God. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 We speak it in Jesus' name. We speak it in Jesus' name. We speak it in Jesus' name. We speak it in your mighty name, God. We speak it in the mighty name of the Lord. We speak it in the mighty name of the Lord. We speak it in the mighty name of the Lord. We speak it in the mighty name of the Lord. We speak it in the mighty name of the Lord. We speak it in the mighty name of the Lord. We speak it in the mighty name of the Lord. Our destiny depends on it. Our families depend on it. Our 
We praise the name Jesus. Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. Somebody bless him.
All you may be seated in this presence. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Lord, we're with you. Lord, we're with you. I believe that there are some people in this building and sometimes we need to hear this. You've been coming to the prayer and there are some things that God has done supernaturally for you. I'm talking about a real testimony. If you're one of those persons, come down here because I think it's time for us to hear that we're not just in prayer making noise. Since you've been coming to this prayer and you can testify of what God has done since you've been coming to this prayer, something that could nobody do but God, come down here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking about a real testimony. Not I just thank God for being in, he just been blessing me. Not that kind of testimony. Not where I just want to think of goodness of the Lord and, and you just don't know how he, ch I'm talking about a real testimony. Prophet is mine, I have a testimony for real. Thank you, Jesus. Because we need to know that prayer don't change things. Prayer changes everything. Thank you, Jesus. See, I see some of y'all fanning. But when I was in the world and in the disco, I gave it all to the devil. I came there with pressed hair and left with afro. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all better stop playing. Because we get too temperamental. Come on, somebody. Y'all fool with me when the air condition gets fixed. I tell them for the next six weeks, we ain't going to have no air. Come on here, somebody. Because see, some of y'all say God done call you to the nations. What you going to do when you get to Africa and it's 127 degrees? Oh, you yeah. And you standing outside in the blazing sun. Come on, somebody. See, I'm just looking, holding me. I'm just looking for my real prayer warriors. See, I ain't, look, I ain't looking for them people that just, just so hot. Just, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't even understand that. I don't even understand that. Let me tell you why. Because there are positions that we have found ourselves in that we were not fanning while we were doing it. When you was in sin with whoever he was, you wasn't laying there trying to fan. I'm 
I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. That's why we don't need to come in here fanning on God. You need to come in here giving God some praise because this is the very time that the Lord would want to give you a breakthrough and the enemy would get in the air conditioning because he knows your spirit and he knows if it ain't cool enough, you ain't going to praise God. But the devil is a liar. I'm going to possess everything that God said that I can have. See, this is when he wants you to miss it. I said, this is when he wants you to miss it. Oh, I don't know if y'all hear what I'm saying. I said, this is when he wants you to miss it. Touch three people and tell them I'm not missing my breakthrough. Tell them I'm not missing my breakthrough. No, y'all still ain't sick. You must be still hot. I said, tell them I'm not missing my breakthrough. No, no, stop. Uh -uh, not the music. Not, I said, tell them I'm not missing my breakthrough. Now open up your mouth and give God a praise. can be seated if you can. Walk right up here, baby. You hold the microphone. Walk right up here and state your name. My name is Raynell Gilliard. And I lost my husband in March the 1st. He passed away. And I started coming to this prayer because I just needed the peace of God because the grief was just overtaking me, where I couldn't preach, couldn't do nothing, just walk through the house, couldn't sleep in the bedroom, couldn't give his clothes away, couldn't do nothing. And I started coming to this prayer, and the Lord just gave me such a peace concerning my husband, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah. And I thank and I praise God that I have, I'm back in the bedroom, I gave his stuff away. And I know it's a new season for me. The other thing is, I was on drugs for 21 years. Shooting dope in my neck and all over my body. And I had holes in my arms running puff. And I came to New York and got delivered. But I still wasn't free because I was on my job in an AIDS facility wearing long sleeves. Too ashamed to let the nurses or the doctors or anybody see my arms. I was so ashamed. And after I started coming to this prayer, the Lord said, go get you some short sleeve uniforms and stop covering up my glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, somebody give God some praise. I said, somebody give God some praise. He is the deliverer. Praise God. Prophetess, this happened about two and a half years ago. I've been coming to the... Praise God. I've been coming to the prayer for the past six years, and this happened like two and a half years ago. I'm, I come from a family of eight, and I have a brother that's in the middle. He's always in and out of jail, selling drugs, doing the, you know, running the streets. And one Tuesday, I was in prayer, and Prophetess was teaching us how to break, pray to break generational curses. And he was incarcerated in Canada, and he said that he saw me in a vision. He was facing 11 counts. They had already taken his children, separated him from his home. And he saw me in a vision come to him in the prison in a black skirt with a white t-shirt. And that was what I was wearing at the time because that's the uniform prophetess gave us. And he said, I came in the prison, in the vision, told him what to tell the judge on the satellite 
My brother got 11 counts dismissed the time foul! See, you don't even understand what's happening right there. If you got a loved one that's in trouble and drugs and on jail, in jail and on crack, that's your turn to shout. Because what she just did, she just opened up a door for your relatives to come out. Because I'm going to tell you something. The Lord has ordained this today. Because your miracle is right, right, right in your mouth. It's right in your mouth. It's right in your mouth. And today when I say give God a shout behind a testimony. Your miracle is in your mouth. Now open up your mouth and give God a shout. can be seated if you can. State my, your name, baby. My name is Teresa Perez. All I know is I was blind and I, I see. Beginning of the year, I was hemorrhaging from my eyes. And the doctor said I won't be able to see. But the Lord, I went through seven surgeries, and the Lord made it that I could see. The doctor said, Teresa, the Lord is on your side. Can you please pray for my son who has, who has a nervous condition? He's eight years old. And I said, I will pray for him. She said, he said, because the Lord is on your side, you're not supposed to see. I just want you to know that even when I was in a hospital, my cousin was killed, and my uncle ended up with lung cancer. My cousin was not saved. My uncle, I prayed for him. I spoke to him, I ministered to him. I took him to all his chemotherapies because he doesn't speak English. And he now is saved, and his cancer is in remission. Somebody just, 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 just shout for healing. Shout for healing. I said something. God gave me something a few weeks back. And I don't know if you remember this. But when she got through talking, this is what I, he brought this back to my remembrance. 
There were some things that was going on and he told us that day that we are to throw the power. Throw it where we need it. Throw it to the city we need it in. When she just got through saying that about healing, I feel a witness in my spirit that we need to take 30 seconds and throw some power to somebody that you know that's sick. And God's going to begin to take it in remission. I've been coming to this prayer for about, I guess about three years, if you'll notice. Last year, around August the 12th, I wasn't here anymore for about three months. Last year, on August the 12th, at 1025, I left my prayer group at my church, walked outside, got in my car, and went on because I was working at nights. Drove to work, no problem. Parked the car, went in, and went in. It's a great big building, walked in the cafeteria and sat down, and I called my friend. And when I called her on the telephone, all she could hear she knew it was my number, but she could, all she could hear was the sound of an animal just, you know, just making these terrible th sounds. Something happened, something exploded in my head, and my whole body was gone, and there was nobody around. There was no one in the cafeteria, and I couldn't say anything to her. So finally, I managed to ramble on inside into the park that I work in. Now, there is no way a man who never comes to work on time, never comes to work on time. I, they always are after him about everything. He stayed in trouble with everything. The man came in the building. Not only did he come in the building, he walked through the building into the department and he found me. And immediately he knew, he said the face was already pulled down. I wasn't talking right and he, immediately he wanted to know my pastor's name and I couldn't tell him. So you know something was definitely wrong with me. So they, then he used to ask, you know, they, they know how things work even though they're in the, you know, in the world. The supervisor came and she was saying she wanted to call an ambulance, but I couldn't tell her anymore. My memory was gone. I couldn't, there, there just wasn't nothing there. The hand was closing already. So he got up out of his seat and he said, have the men on the other side, go over and get them, bring them over here and bring her outside. Now we were only five blocks from Long Island Jewish. He put me in his car, he took me, I could not tell them anything. He went in my pocketbook, he got out the card from Long Island Jewish from before. And right away, they had like the triage nurse when they were doing it. I heard it struck unit to emergency and I knew they were coming for me. The hand was already closed and it fit, the arm felt like it weighed, whatever. Immediately they started telling me. On through the night, they worked all night long and they told me that you're gonna be with us for a while. And they also told me, I didn't, they didn't have to tell me because the whole thing was already paralyzed. And they said, after that, you're going to rehab. So I was trying to, you know, you're trying to figure out, think, put all this together. Then I realized that I couldn't walk because it was on this side. A few days later, I found the scripture and it says that this illness is not unto death. John 11 and 4. <laughs> but that the Son of Man may be glorified. So I realized then, in the morning, my memory began to come back. And I realized then that I wasn't going to die, but that this was something that I was going to have to go through. And this whole thing was paralyzed. If you all noticed, you didn't see me all that time. They didn't expect me to walk. 
A few days later, I got up in the hospital and walked and scared the doctors to death. <laughs> they still not, they had me slated for rehab. They, they already told me, you're gonna stay here. I was in the hospital 21 days and they were saying that when we get you like you should be, you'll be in rehab as they thought. This was still paralyzed and this whole hand was closed. But if you'll notice now, to God be the glory, you would never know. You would never know. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The doctors, they stood there in amazement. They could not understand it, and I kept trying to tell them to understand. I'm an ambassador. I did not come from down here. This is not where I, my home my is. God. I am traveling, and that's it. They could not until this day. I lost it. You remember, I was really heavy, so I lost a whole lot. They, they tried to what it is doing, and are you asking me? Because I keep telling them, I said, you know, you're the ones that told me that I have to do all of this. And they want to know, well, why are you flattening out? I said, I keep telling you, I didn't come from down here. I gave them all Bibles, everything. This whole thing was totally paralyzed and closed. I went from there, I went to, the therapist came to the house. He came one time with me. Now listen, he said that the whatever in this leg had gone back and he told me he said I'm not coming anymore you're going to outpatient therapy so when I could drive again and of course I had to wait for the arm to open up enough you know because you can't you can drive with the sand but you got to be kind of careful and that's when I started coming back to prayer again to somebody God give God a praise right now <laughs> Denise Sims, I am 35 years of age, a mother of three, and a wife of one husband. I think and I praise God for allowing me to be in a place where I can hear and receive and understand that the Lord is speaking to me. I just thank God because from every word that I have received from this year, when I've come into this house, he has confirmed it every time I have walked in the door. I think and I praise God because his promises are true and they are yea and amen. I think and I praise him for I was two years in a home, in a shelter with my girls. And when I got into my apartment, I have been there 12 years and I thank God for that. But he told me to go and to look for a home. There was a home out there for you and this was two years ago. And I thank him because I had been looking and the homes were outrageous in price and I didn't have the money and I could not see where the home was coming from. But to know that I stood on the name of the word of God, he said to look for a home. And I thank God because my husband and I have found a home. We have found a home. Home and I thank God for the home. That is not just the blessing. That is not just the blessing. The Lord told me that we would pay no money down. And we thank God because we have contractors coming in and they're willing to do windows and floors and landscaping. And we needed to have $19,000 down payment. And my husband received it yesterday. And it's non taxable money. And it's not money that we have to give back. And I thank him. I praise God because there's no goodness of my own. I thank him. I said, Lord, we need four rooms, but he gave us six. And I thank him. I thank the Lord. So I say, Lord, I give it back to you because it's not ours to keep, but we would give the rooms to whoever you say shall have them. And I thank the Lord. I thank him. I thank and I praise God. And these things might sound materialistic, but I'm not a materialistic person. And I thank God for that. He blessed us with a car. Some years ago, the car, the brakes stopped working and we were on the highway going to a wedding. My husband had to take it in and we paid for the fixture. But then two days later, we had to take it back in and we had to, then they call us on yesterday, it's over $4,000. But the Lord gave us a brand new car and we thank God for that. See, let me tell you something. 
Because I know y'all think that every Tuesday when I walk in here, God, I praise you. You're Jehovah Jireh. You're my provider. Some of y'all be going, yeah, okay, here we go again. But I promise you, every time you decree that in the atmosphere, there is something that he's doing for somebody in the building right then and right there. If I can put this on rewind, somebody just thanking for providing for you right now. My name is Dornella Craig. In the year 2002, I was coming to this prayer. I was getting ready to come in the morning, and me and my husband had an argument. He was drinking, he got a knife or whatever it was, and he cut me on my arm. And then he cut me behind my neck. I was able to call 911. They came, they sent me to the trauma, I live in New Jersey, they sent me to the trauma, and he is now serving time in jail. But I want everybody to know that I survived. God has kept me. I could have been dead. I could have been dead. He kept me. I want you to hear what she said, because this, all this is is God confirming. She said, I was getting ready to come to this prayer. And the Lord gave me this say a couple of weeks ago, that when you get up out of the bed, and you get him ready to come, the hand of the Lord begins to move on your behalf. You ain't even got to get to the prayer on your way here. Somebody just praise God for her life. Oh, this is too deep for me. My name is Peggy Clemens. I don't even know where to begin. When I first started coming to prayer, I ran into one of my favorite students. It was Atisha. And we began to just communicate back and forth. And 2004, I had been looking for another house. She gave me your testimony. And I said, God, your word said you'll give us houses that we don't build. And I wasn't going to tell the testimony, but my girlfriend said, you got to go up there. You got to tell what God has done for you. My husband had been looking in Georgia for two years. We've been looking. When the threshing floor came, the Lord said, go a day early for the threshing floor. Because I always like to get into the city and pray for the day before. When I got there, my husband said, Peggy, go to get the realtor to pick you up. The realtor picked me up from the hotel, took me to look at the property. The first piece of property I saw, God said, it's yours. And I looked at it because it was exceedingly abundantly above what I could think or dream. So I said, he said, begin to walk around this property and begin to claim it for the glory of God. He said, begin to call out that it's yours. I said, okay, God. I did that. We went back, went to the threshing floor, came back home. I, talk, I called my husband on the phone and I said, I found our house. And we told them, they told us how much it was going to be, but God gave us a price and we told them the price that we wanted to pay for it but there was warfare in the atmosphere. But I bless God, when I came back to this prayer again, that Tuesday morning, it's in my book, before they called us to come and close, God said, do you want the house? And I said, yes, God. He said, it's yours. He said, it's yours. 
We got ready to go to close and we got to close and they came up with all kind of stuff. My husband said, Peggy, what do you think? And I said, God said it's ours. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they're going to do. God said it's ours. Well, I want you to know on the 23rd of last month, we closed on five acres of land, 12 room house, six room garage, and a full pool in the backyard. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Okay, you don't know whether or not you should praise God or not. Anybody want a new house? That's your shout. Let me help you right quick. When I came to this ministry, Sister White, y'all remember? I had holes in my shoes. Some of y'all heard my testimony. I was going through McDonald's drive-thru to buy a soda just so I can have to extra toilet paper for napkins. You don't hear what I'm saying to you. I was living in Far Rockaway. You don't hear what I'm saying. In the projects, you don't, hear, you don't want to hear my testimony. When that lady started dancing, the Lord just began to say exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or think. I bought my first house in Chicago as an investment property. I bought my second house in New York City. I bought my third house, a smaller house in Waycross, Georgia. All of them over $300,000 pieces of property. I owe no mortgage on none of them. I just moved into a new house, $2.5 million. But I was dancing for another piece of property that I saw that's 3.8 million. Now this dance right here, this ain't just for the house. This is why this dance is for the house and the mortgage being paid off and you don't owe nothing. <laughs> Elder Boyd, you in the sound room, but I just saw you in a new house. Go 
God said, get up and dance. And it ain't going to be what you think it's going to be. But God going to give you favor. I see you dancing in a new house. Six bedrooms. I see it. A pool room. I see it. A pool in your backyard. I see it. God said, dance. Dance in the void. You are about to move, said the Holy Ghost. again land I'm giving land I'm releasing land not just houses but land
walked in here today and he said money. He said money. Money that you didn't work for. He just postured your spirit to receive it. He's already earmarked people that's going to give it to you. Money that you ain't going to have to pay back. God, I wish somebody would believe this. Money! I just want one person to believe me prophetically. This is a prophetic praise. Today is the 4th of July. Today you get your financial independence. making excuses because I'm not no prosperity preacher but sister white I promise you I see I see I see money raining down in this place I do I'm telling you it's falling in this place Jesus. It's falling in the name of Jesus. It's falling in the name of Jesus. Doors are being opened. This may not, if you don't believe it, don't do it. But turn around and point to somebody like you telling them off. And tell them that the Holy Ghost said the answer is yes.
come on, another testimony. Who else got another testimony? Who else got another testimony? Come on. Jesus. Make it as quick as you can. Who else got another testimony? God, I thank you. Uh, my name is Sister Tina. Marvelous, I thank God. I thank God for you. I thank God for your sacrifice. I thank God for your obedience since I've been coming here. In the prayer. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. You told me, you told me years ago that God was going to use me for my family. And I've been praying and praying and praying for my family. But since I've been coming here, God shifted my faith up just a bit more than I needed to believe him for the impossible, for the miraculous. And I thank and praise God. I was praying for my brother. He was so depressed and going through so much. And I was tired of seeing him suffer. I said, Lord, you got to do something for him. And you said, shift. Throw something. You, what you said. Throw the power. Yes. This way. He came Wednesday night and gave his life to the Lord. He gave his back, life back to the Lord. That's the one that you prophesied to him. Fall out the way. But even my mother. And God has delivered my mother. Healed up from cancer. I've been standing on the word of God. And God is just doing it in me, Providence. I'm going all the way. I surrendered it all and I'm going all the way. And I see his hand. Last night, and it, went, and it had 12 in the morning. 12 in the morning. I made a call and found out I had some miracle money. I wasn't even expecting. And since I've been coming here, God's been blessing me with money everywhere. It was just coming in and everywhere. I don't even have a nine to five and God's been blessing me. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, keeping my kids. Thank you, Lord. So since I've been coming here, God has been moving my sisters here, my brothers here, my mother's delivered, my family is on their way, all of them, because it's promise. My name is Claudia, and the last time I came to the prayer, I have done something I've never done before. I ran around. The Holy Ghost just had me running around the church, and I'm like, Lord, why? Yesterday made me 24, and Thursday, the devil tried to take away my life, where I came from the market with my mother and my niece, a year and a half years old, and we was crossing the railroad tracks and the car behind us was going so slow to where the train was coming and it started ringing and the bar was coming down on my car. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that as the bar was coming down on my car, I was honking the car behind me so they can move and there was workers out there. They didn't even tell the other cars to back up. And I'm like, Lord, what is going on? And as the car was coming down, the bar was coming down on my car, I just put it on reverse and I backed up and I hit the car behind me. And as soon as I hit the car behind me, the train just ran past in front of me. And I was like, I thank you, Lord, because those weapons that was formed against me did not prosper. <laughs> Vivian Lee. I've been coming to prayer for three years. I came here exactly on my birthday three years ago, 1014, and when I went home, my father had passed away. 
But the reason why I'm here is today, I want to speak on something that passed Elder Boyd. Um, for a couple of, I believe, month or two, he was studying, we were studying the, the book of Esther. Yeah. And he would always tell us that we were Esthers. Yeah. And he would also say that some of us were going to find ourselves in places that we would be pinching ourselves. So something happened to me two months ago. My dearest girlfriend, who used to come to this prayer meeting also and relocated to Tampa, Florida for, because of her job. She's the uh, regional director of a pharmaceutical company and she, her group, she has like seven people, staff. They're the number one. And so because they came in number one uh, on their convention, they called her up to the podium and they gave her a gift. And this gift was a ticket for two to go to Athens, Greece on a cruise ship, a six-star cruise ship. The name of the cruise ship is called the Crystal, uh, the Crystal Symphony. And I didn't know this, but she called me up and she said, are you, sit down. And so I sat and she said, I want to take you with me on a trip. And, and she said, well, we're going to Greece. And I thought that I would have to pay my fare. So I kind of like backed off. And I said, ah, I don't know if I can do this. She said, listen, all expenses paid. I'm even coming to New York. Listen to this. I'm even coming to New York and we're going to meet at the Kennedy Airport. And when you meet me over there, we're going to head on out to Greece. We're going to get on the cruise ship. And so when we got there, and I get on the cruise ship, guess what? We were in the penthouse, okay? 10-day cruise. And this, the, it went to Greece, to four different islands, went to Ephesus in Turkey, and the last stop was Venice, Italy. Now let me tell you, the last, and I knew all along that this was the Lord blessing me and her, because she, she's, she's on fire for the Lord. And although there were many other people on that ship, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that this was a gift from the Lord to us. On the last night, they took us to a palace. And just like Elder Boy said that I would be pinching myself, I could not believe, I could not believe. Also, they gave us a butler, honey. I had me a butler coming in every day. And he was serving us. Okay? And I tell you, and my girlfriend, she likes to, she likes to jog. So she went jogging and I just kind of sat back and I was in the room. She comes into the room. She had her iPod. She said, I want you to listen to this. And the song that was playing was Donald Lawrence, Bless Me, Enlarge My Territory. I was wailing. I was crying. I, I tell you, it was the, the, the trip of a lifetime. I remember when I got my tickets, I was here. And I ran after Elder Boyd. And I said, Elder Boyd, Elder Boyd, I got to show you this. I was so excited. And I tell you, God is good. God is, oh my God. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He's a good God. Somebody give God a praise. He will right do now. above and beyond. Good morning. Glory to God. My name is Christine. I have four sons um, Teddy, Arnold, David, and Daniel. But for some reason, David is the one that I'm always praying for. However,
I thank God I don't have no prosperity message. I don't have nothing to say. But all I got to say is because of God and this prayer, I've been pressing, pressing so much. And since I've been coming here, money has been falling out the sky. Prophet. He said, if you stay obedient to the prayer, I will bless you. And he gave me $100,000 when you preached about Cornelius. And it came out of the sky because while I was praying for my rent to be paid, my friend was like, God told me to give you $100,000. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, stay. Blessings come from obedience. And God, I made a vow. Last time she said, put your vow down. My vow was to stay dedicated to this 5 a.m. prayer and keep pressing. Now, you know what? I'm going to be really honest. We really don't have enough strength to praise God the way we need to praise God. Just snap your fingers or something because we, we would hurt ourselves. If, if I really started praising God the way I want to praise God on that testimony right there, y'all would have to call 911 for me. really don't know. You don't know who's standing behind you. You don't know the person that's standing next to you, what they done been through. Just turn around and tell somebody, don't knock my praise until you know my pain. My name is Alita, Alita Bruce, and I'm 37. I have an 18-year-old son. Um, <clears throat> Anita, I, um, prophetess Anita, I want to let you know that I love you. I love you so much. To God be I watch. I try to get to you so many times, and I just couldn't. It's like the ushers just wouldn't let me, like, you know. <laughs> just really, you know, get through to you because I really need you to, to touch me, to lay your hands on me and pray for me. Okay, what's your testimony? I've watched my testimony. I've watched your um, No More Sheets and I um, want to let the sister know that was just down here um, to, you know, that we all have issues like that. My testimony, I am also an ex- um, well, I'm struggling with drugs right now, and I am also an ex-prostitute, and um, God saved my life. I ended up in a coma from depression. I was in a coma from three days. I took an overdose of Zyprexa, drunk a 22 ounce of Sainaz, and Neurontin. And God took me out of that coma. 
Um, right soon, I suffered depression for six years, and I suffered it because of the things that I went to as a child. Um, I was molested by my brother, molested by my stepfather, and it just like tore me up. My family turned their back on me. Um, my son's father, he snuck crack cocaine inside of a blunt of weed that I was smoking and I almost lost my life. I seen nothing but darkness. Um, after, I'm here to testify because this is what God called me to do. And I used to be like nervous, like I am now, to come in before a whole lot of people and shout and praise and just think about the things that God have done to me. But then God also spoke to me again and to let me know that it's not about them. It's about me. I built you. I created you. I gave you that heart. And I want you to praise me like you, like you know how. Like I've taught you to praise me. Praise me. Forget about everything and everybody that's around you. And those that laugh at you will be the last. And I also want to say that... Um, you know, I, after all that I've went through, through the shelters to get me an apartment and everything. When I got an apartment, it started falling apart. Um, God just blessed me with a new landlord. He just blessed me with a brand new place where I wouldn't have to move and go through no more depression. Somebody give God a praise for her right now. Somebody give God a praise for her right now. Somebody praise God for her complete deliverance from drugs. Come on, next testimony. Uh, two minutes. Hello, my name is Donna Kitt, and I'm not a member of this church, but I heard about this ministry through a friend of mine who recommended that I try to get here um, the Monday night of Memorial Day. And um, because I needed to be delivered from sexual sins of my past and just close that door because my life has been trashed ever since and I need to get rid of them. So the miracle for me is, as I was getting dressed that night, I had a choice of two t-shirts. I had a rust-colored t-shirt because of a white 